Hey guys, here's a video of me tuning up my RockShox Deluxe a rear shock with the shock wheels. So to start off with, we have the shock wheels ready to go. Undoing uh, the air cap off the side of the shock wheels. Uh, and you can see the flashing light there showing that um, battery's charged and we're ready to connect. Next up, we need to remove the uh, cap off the uh, deluxe fork. Get a nice zoom in for you. Um, so just a simple removal there. Now this tune, um, I'm going to do something quite different to compared to when I was tuned up my Lyric. And I'm actually going to follow the instructions uh, to see if we can speed up the process of how long this takes. So with the cap off, the next thing to do is to find the short attachment for the shock whiz. For the front fork, you require the long adapter, whereas for the rear, use the short with the two right angle connections to make a really easy setup. Next thing, connect to the shock whiz. There you go, go counterclockwise, let it seat in, and then clockwise to tighten up that connection. So keep it nice and nice and snug there, uh, because of course if you have any loss of connection at the shock wheels or at your shock, then you won't get the appropriate readings. So what we need now is the loops of the protector boot to be pointing towards the shock, so you can get it on nice and snug with the zip ties. From there, just pivot the connector around, counterclockwise, hear the click, let it seat in. nice and snug and there you go all connected so you've got a good seal at the shock good seal at the shock whiz now it's just a matter of getting a nice slick install with the zip ties here so the trick there is just threading it through the connectors so unlike the front shock the loops don't go through the shock whiz so just keep in mind that it's only being held on by the rubber boot now we can either tie it on now However, I think it's best to uh, connect up and run the calibration before we, we do anything more. So the next one is just connecting to the shock quiz, first page. Sometimes you need to compress the bike. There you go. And then the shock quiz device will appear, as you can see there. Next stage, click that. There's some chaotic shock quiz data. So really, click on the menu button, device menu, and then calibration wiz wizard to begin. So here, we're going to go measure compression ratio and then drop that pressure out. So this is real time now, a current pressure in the, in the shock. I'll spin the bike around to give you a better look. So the next step is to remove the dust cap off the shock whiz. So as you can see, the air pressure in real time here. So using an Allen key just to depress that valve and release the pressure. As you see, the shock will sink down to uh, two PSI. My guess there is we're just getting close to just reading a baseline error. So with the air out, it's just a matter of following the calibration wizard from here. So next step is compressing the bike from full extension. So that's just by simply pulling up to pushing down to at least 50% compression, picking up. Two. Next step, mark full extension. So the way to do this is click start with timer, matter of just pulling up on the shock and holding for that time. The next is mark full compression. So that's just a matter of getting down to the bump stop, start with timer, full compression. You get a countdown which makes it really easy. So there you go. The next one, verify full extension. Start with timer again, it gives you a countdown. You pull up on the bike to reach the top of the shock travel, and then it wants a inflation. So now connecting the fork pump to the inlet of the shock whiz. Now it says inflate to the recommended pressure. Now for me, a RockShox recommends weighing both the rider and your equipment, converting that to pounds, and then it's a one-to-one -one conversion. So for me, that'd be 160 pounds of rider and gear. So we want to get that up to uh, 160 PSI. The nice thing is, 
with the shock whiz is you get a real-time uh, pressure gauge. It's saying we're reading about 75 and real-time pressure is 80. So we'll keep press pressuring that up. Now, a trap that I've had is that on some inflations it becomes very difficult. I believe this is most likely uh, the pump trying to feel a different part of the shock and you need huge amounts of pressure applied to the shock pump to be able to pressurise the shock. Then riding it will be rock hard, like it's completely locked out. So in this situation, I disconnect the pump and deflate slowly and then pump up again. As you can see, this process is much easier than with the front fork where you lose compression and the adapter for the rear shock's fantastic. So what you can see now is 150 on the shock pump and 160 real time on the shock whiz. So I'm gonna take the shock whiz, this is digital and direct uh, measurement, so I'm happy with that. So that's pumped up to the recommended settings. Next is cycle the compression. So this is a matter of full compression and full extension. So disconnect your pump, so full extension. Okay, so this is an exact example of while we're reading 160, the actual shock is rock hard. So in this setting, I let out a bit of pressure. And once again, recompress the shock whiz up to the desired 160 with the pressure balanced out. So that is something that's not recommended by uh, the shock whiz setup guide. However, that 160 we saw before may have been 160 at the point of the gauge. However, uh, it's not a true reflection of 160 being in the fork. So we'll compress up again. So that's 100 PSI. Compress the shock, just to try and even out some of that pressure. So once again, we're at a little over 150 and 160. However, now I know that the pressure is distributed throughout the shock. So if you follow the guides now, it's wanting 50% compression. Might be easier if you're sitting on. So here we go, 50% compression. And then full extension by pulling up. It just says repeat this five times. I assume that's just to recalibrate and balance the shock. Um, however, if there's any tuning gurus out there who know, hit me up below. So here, pressure's saying 159. Uh, Add a bit more pressure just to get the numbers perfect. Now what it wants is to mark the baseline pressure by extending the shock into its full extended. So bring up to full extension to make sure you're at the top of the shock travel. There you go, shock whiz is calibrated. So with it all calibrated, put the dust cap back on. Secure your shock quiz with the zip ties. Tighten it up, trim off the, the tails, and just make sure that the shock quiz can't collide with anything, as you certainly don't want to be doing damage. So we're all tuned up. Now it's time to hit out on the trail and get this deluxe all dialed in. All right, we'll see you out there. Hey guys, I've just climbed to the top of Eagle Park from the car park. So where I'm at, for the first time ever, I've got a tuning score of 100. I've got 75% confidence and the shock whiz is wanting large hits, jumps and drops. So fortunately, on the verge is exactly what's needed to get that last little bit dialed in. All right, we'll see you at the bottom. So I'm at the bottom of the mixer in Eagle Park and uh, really the best score I've had so far. 96% tuning score with 99% confidence, increasing low speed compression, but Unfortunately, this shock only has uh, pressure and rebound adjustment. We've got uh, one deep compression, uh, as it was to be expected on a, a dull black diamond downhill track, but uh, let's do it again and see what happens. All right, we'll see you at the top. All right, so we're back to the top of Eagle Park now, and really, once again, my stats on the shock wheels are, are looking great. So we're at a 92% tune with 100% confidence. So really the suggestions are compression changes, which unfortunately this shock doesn't have, but that's something we could have dialed in. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna do a few more miles and see if we get any other suggestions uh, through the, the fog. All right, we'll see at the bottom.
Right, so we're at the bottom of the mixer, and uh, really, this is the easiest tune I've had so far. So we're at 96% on uh, tuning score, 100% confidence, with suggestions to add low speed compression. So because that's a function that's not on this shock, I reckon we're done. It's riding really well. I'm super happy with it. So bring on uh, Gravity Enduro next weekend. Hey guys, so I'm home now after a good session at Adelaide's Eagle Park and a couple of runs down the mixer, so the double black diamond downhill track there. Just wanna give you a rundown of where we're at with this deluxe tune. So to start off with, the pressure that I'm running is uh, 160 PSI. So this is calculated off the RockShox guide. And the interesting thing is I am running more pressure than uh, at least my uh, shock pump was recommending. Um, so there's at 160 PSI, it was reading approximately 150. So we're just under 10% variation. Whether that makes a difference, I'm not sure. Likewise, off the Trek website, they are saying at 160 PSI to be six clicks out on rebound. But as you can see here, I am still at, at the zero point. So if we backed it off, so six would be one, two, three, four, five. Six, so just under, uh, just over halfway. However, I'm exactly where uh, Rockshock recommends um, a starting point with full a positive rebound. So really, quite a big uh, difference between what Trek has recommended versus what the Shock Wiz has recommended for my riding style. I'll put the stats up here. If I change the, the setting away from a more playful setup, what it's recommending is I've got a 92% score uh, versus the 96. And likewise, it's recommending a bit more high and low speed compression, which unfortunately isn't available with this Shock. So overall, the tune was heaps easier than with the Lyric Fork. I think that's just got to do with there being more adjustment uh, with rebound and compression uh, on the Lyric. Otherwise, I reckon Trek gets pretty close to um, the good settings for, for most people. The good thing about the Shock Wiz, however, is that you've personalised it to my own riding style. Subjectively, it feels fantastic. And to be honest, I can't wait to get out riding next weekend. I hope this helps. If you have any other questions, hit me up below. Otherwise, happy riding.